Today on Straight Talk Africa, a look at U.S. President Barack Obama's legacy in Africa. That's next, right here on Straight Talk Africa. Hello and welcome to Straight Talk Africa live from the Voice of America studios here in Washington. I'm Esther Gidu Ewart in for Shaka Sali who is on assignment. Well, hello to you, Esther, and hello to all our viewers and listeners on the continent and elsewhere. I'm Mariam Diallo, your social media reporter. Today we'll talk about President Barack Obama's legacy in Africa and to some extent the U.S. And coming up later in our STA inbox, Mariama. Well, our audience will uh, have uh, their say. They've written to us uh, through their emails, Facebook and uh, Twitter comments. So we'll reveal some of them, and that's ahead on Straight Talk Africa. Hope you'll stay with us. Thanks, Mariama. But let's take a look at President Obama's historic eight years in the White House and what they have meant for Africa. Paul Cisco has more. As President, Barack Obama made four trips to sub-Saharan Africa, visiting six countries, challenging its leadership on human rights issues, gay and women's rights, and on good governance. July 2009. In Ghana, he met with President John Atta Mills and famously told Parliament, Africa doesn't need strong men, it needs strong institutions. Development depends on good governance. Early in his second term, he went to Senegal, South Africa, and Tanzania, meeting with Senegal's President Macky Sall, South Africa's Jacob Zuma, and in Tanzania, President Jakaya Kikwete. When you got good governance, when you have democracies that work, sound management of public funds, transparency and accountability to the citizens that put leaders in place, it turns out that that is not only good for the state uh, and the functioning of government, it's also good for economic development. Obama brought U.S. and African business leaders together. He unveiled the Power Africa initiative, aimed at bringing more reliable electricity to the continent, worked on trade agreements discussed democratic development and meeting global security challenges with his African partners. A high point for the president's family was their tour of Robben Island, where Nelson Mandela was imprisoned for 27 years. The U.S. president returned to South Africa later in the year and attended the memorial for Madiba. Nelson Mandela died on December 5, 2013. He changed laws, but he also changed hearts. July 2015, President Obama made a long-anticipated visit to Kenya, his father's birthplace. He met with President Uhuru Kenyatta and spoke to young people at the Global Entrepreneurial Conference. He next addressed the African Union in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, the first U.S. president to do so. And I'm convinced that nations cannot realize the full promise of independence until they fully protect the rights of their people. As time passes, the Young African Leadership Conferences, YALI, and Growing Network may prove to be his most significant contribution to U.S.-African relations. Or the Power Africa Initiative, electrifying more of what was once called the Dark Continent. The U.S.-African Leaders Summit and public-private trade agreements reached in Washington and business relationships forged with partners on the continent. Or, under his watch, bipartisan renewal of the African Growth and Opportunities Act, reducing tariffs on U.S. and African imports. On democracy building, the Obama legacy is mixed, or perhaps it's just too early to judge. U.S. support helped bring about the first democratic transfer of power in Nigeria, Africa's most populous nation. Contrast that with South Sudan. Despite a hard-brokered comprehensive peace accord, many consider the world's youngest democratic nation a failed state. Several African leaders in power when Obama was first elected president remain, two U.S. terms later, entrenched with power well past their constitutionally mandated time, continuing to thwart the democracy and institution building needed for their nation's prosperity and freedom. What Obama has done while in office is help shift the view of a purely troubled Africa to what it is, a continent of many nations each vital to the security and prosperity of the United States and the world. Paul Sisko, VOA News, Washington.